everyone that played in bro 2021 v premium thank you very much for your hard work thank you to those of you that watched the streams thank you to those of you that casted that played that judge that staff that ran the stream everything thank you thank you thank you and now we have a four week break until standard but i while i was commentating the eu stream i was also signing up i signed up rather for the na tournament because then would, i would be able to play after eu finishes and if it doesn't go well i go to sleep early if it does go well then i go to sleep at 4 a.m which happened so i ended up 25th out of like 300 plus entrants which i'm pretty happy about from you know my first serious tournament in two years uh although i definitely could have done better my last round started at 3 a.m and at that point exhaustion hit me too hard and i made misplays virtually every single turn which was really unfortunate because i definitely saw many times where i could have won if i hadn't made mistakes but ichi the grand blue player in top eight was the one that defeated me at the last round and also Suo defeated me and the second last round on stream in the mirror match, but he really played excellently there and I deserve to lose that one. But today I want to talk to you about my deck that I used, talk about the cards that I used and like why I used them, go over my matchups and things like that, uh, lessons to learn and things to keep in mind for next time. Because I'm definitely going to come back with this deck for the next big V tournament because I really do enjoy it. Uh, so first things first, why did I even pick Gavriel, right? Why did I pick Gavriel? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, it's one of my favorite units of all time. It's literally one of my favorite units in the Vanguard universe of all time. And when it came out in the V series, I built the deck immediately and I had fun with it, quite a lot of fun with it. But I feel like I, I felt a little bit dirty at the same time playing it because of like, you know, it was like 16 crit. It felt a lot more casino, whereas now it feels very consistent while still relying on that win con of, you know, checking crits onto the Hamiel. But the deck feels a lot more pleasant to play nowadays compared to before. And for me, that's a really huge deal, like the like the kind of like the satisfaction of playing a deck as well. The reason why I didn't take something like Dimension Place is because one, I actually played like I think like 200 plus games with that deck and just got burnt out and two i just think it's not as strong in the current v meta as dp is in premium which is why i took dp into premium and simply i just wanted to actually like fight seriously because i wanted the chrono jets like i want to take my best most competitive deck as well in order to have the chance for the chrono jets and i definitely came very close like at one point i was 6-1 in swiss and i definitely felt good about myself there so that's why i picked the deck but of course let's talk about the cards themselves so gavriel is the boss unit of the deck she does say when during your turn if you have a total of three or more new cards put into yours or your opponent's damage zone your whole front row gets plus 10k which is very nice you know you get a nice power bonus onto your front row which is good Good, right that's already starts off things a little bit but her second skill is the most vital one once per turn cabos one so boss one choose one card in your damage zone add it to your hand put choose another one and put it to the bottom of your deck and then deal yourself two damage so you rescue check two we call this a rescue check so essentially this is kind of like the main skill that turns on a lot of your trigger checks you know if you check a crit you can give your units a crit in the main phase and things like that so it's very important for that reason it is quite important to rewrite every turn if possible because not so much because of the protect marker but more so for the soul because a lot of effects use soul in this deck and you can run out very easily that's the thing the biggest issue is that you run out of soul quite easily and especially if you don't find the rewrites which you can search by the way um it can get pretty rough but she is an amazing grade three and i definitely think that she will remain to be the main card in the deck for a very long time now of course while she is the boss unit or she is i guess the main face of the deck the win con itself is of course hamiel so a lot of people are not big fans of hamiel but i myself am so what does hamiel do first things first when you call her and you have a vanguard with black in its name such as of course the black shiver gavriel that you see here uh then you can kind of ask one and choose a card from your damage zone and call it to rearguard circle and then you deal one damage to your vanguard but it's a hard one spread turn so this is already very nice because when you call it you can almost plus one and you can call something else that will also do this damage check you know this rescue check for you and that way you have more chances of checking triggers and putting crits onto her now why do we put crits onto her well it's for her second skill which is when she attacks you can almost three yes three and then until end of battle she gets plus 15k and a crit and your opponent cannot guard with sentinels today so they have to use hard shield in v premium to guard her but at the end of the battle she goes to soul which is very good like if you miss her skill 
it's not so much that not killing the opponent hurts or you know like that you didn't you know your opponent pg'd or something what hurts is not having the soul like this going to soul is super important again as i said because this deck is so soul hungry so this is the win con and i think it's pretty self-explanatory generally speaking you want to call off things that deal you more damage and so we'll go over some of those cards right now of course the number one most important one is yafkiel i think this is kind of one of the best grade twos ever printed in this entire clan i remember it still popping off when it was first revealed so yafkiel says when placed on rearguard circle you can count almost one she gets plus 3k and then you choose a card in your damage zone and add it to your hand and if you did you deal one damage to your vanguard and it's a hard once per turn so this means you know if you're go you know you don't have a grade three in your hand you can count blast it add it to your hand deal yourself a damage you check your crit on turn two that's perfect you get to swing with the crit you can actually go pretty hard in the early game against decks like prism and just like set up an early board of like a yaf kill and like some other great twos in order to start pressuring your opponent with some of those rescue checks already because then if you push them to four you have multiple lethal swings on turn three because hamiel swinging for lethal anyway because she gains a crit herself but then on top of that if you can check a crit and put it on another rear guard or into the vanguard you're threatening triple lethal like that so you can sometimes make use of a strong early game but against most matchups i play quite lame early sometimes even just pass and not give them damage like i don't like to give leofalls the counter boss one i don't like to give you know the columbards the counter boss one and things like that even against prism i don't want them to counter boss for rosa so sometimes just like ride pass and oftentimes against angels they will also ride pass and not let you use this skill either which is you know one of the many skills in this deck that get turned off by your opponent passing early but they lose a card from hand by not drive checking there so of course that is also very nice but she's a great card you know just an incredible piece of the deck then we play four of the salafiel salafiel gets plus 10k power during your turn on rear circle if a new card is put into your damage this turn and when she's placed you can solve us one to heal a card from your damage and then deal yourself on damage and it's also hard once per turn this is a very important skill because there are ways you can push your own damage zone but they do cost counter blast and so sometimes you will push yourself to four but have two phase down and so then you will only have two phase up so you can't use hamiel cards like her and there's one more card as well that don't cost counter blast to do the rescue check are super vital because they are counter chargers as well so that way you will have the counter blast necessary for hamiel and it's important to keep these kinds of effects for the last of your chain of rescue checks because you need that counter charge sometimes at the very end especially if you accidentally check a heal or something or not accidentally but if you check a heal from a rescue check and heal yourself out and then you need to self damage yourself again then you need that counter charge from a card like this and sadly my loss at the very end came from misplaying with this is that i didn't keep the salafiel until the very end when i needed to counter charge to use a hamiel or something like that and so salafiel is a very important card very very important i would never take her out of the deck and uh japan has a full art version of this so i would really like it if we also got the full art version of this um in english too that'd be great now the newest edition and in my opinion one of the best cards in this deck right now in terms of consistency is the one and only Sariel. Now Sariel, her main skill, the first one, is the most important part, right? So her first skill is when placed on a vanguard or rearguard circle, count must one, soul must one, you search your deck for any normal unit and add it to your damage zone and then if you put one you heal a card from your damage. So basically the one that you counter blasted is what you usually heal and if you have one or less face down cards in your damage she gets boost as well. So she can actually boost and then if you, you know, intercept away the thing in front you can put her to front attack with her next turn this first kill is so damn important though because she essentially allows you to tutor anything you're missing a hamiel search it out you're missing a you're great stuck you don't have a gavriel search it out and then use something to add it to hand you don't have one of your rescue combos you know you don't have a like i don't know a yafkiel or a salafiel search it out you don't have one of the literally the next card we're going to take a look at that pushes your damage up so that if your opponent damage denies you you can literally push yourself to three search it out almost on soul last one is actually pretty expensive especially the soul blast part again i'm going to keep saying this but this card is so vital like you could technically get away with three as suo did who came uh third actually in na you can get away with three but for me like the consistency of this card is insanely important like this is honestly the reason why i think this card might be the reason why i picked this deck to bro is because I don't have to be afraid of being great stuck. I don't have to be afraid of missing my pieces because I have four extra of any normal unit I want in my deck thanks to Sariel. And that is the best card of, like the best part of this card in my opinion. And I really like, it's thanks to this consistency that I like playing decks like this because then I don't, like there's less for me to be afraid of, right? I already have to be afraid of G assisting and bricking and being great stuck and like, you know, not checking enough triggers and things like that. I don't, like I want to take away as many stress factors from my gameplay as possible and Sariel allows that now of course the next card that takes away the stress factors is another new addition which is the spine celestial yofiel yofiel has two amazing skills first when you ride 
ride over her, you choose a card from your damage zone and swap a unit card from your hand with it. So what this means is that you can basically ride up, swap, and then you can use, like, let's say you ride into, like, Yafkiel, right? You can ride into the Yafkiel, use her skill first to swap the thing from your hand with the card, you know, literally, like, hand swap, and then use Yafkiel, Yafkiel to add that card back to hand and still deal yourself a damage. That skill is already really cool, but the second skill is the most important one. When you call her to rear from hand, specifically only from hand, count plus one and bind her, and then put the top card of your deck into your damage zone. This does not proc any trigger checks, so keep that in mind. And at the end of the turn, she goes from bind to drop, and then you choose any card in your damage zone and add it to your hand, even counterblasted ones. So like after you use your Hamiel skill, you can basically like grab something. So you can literally prepare for next turn. You have a Gavriel in damage zone that you don't want to add to hand during your main phase, but you want to like secure it for next turn. But first you want to see if you drive check any, that's perfectly fine, right? Wait for the end turn and then use it. You're missing some shield in the mirror match, which I was against Suo sadly on stream, add it out. But most importantly, it's that self push. Angels, if you leave us on zero damage and we go into turn three, we can do Call Heal Guardian, push ourselves to 1. Use Gabriel skill, push ourselves to 2. Call this, push ourselves to 3. And then use like a Salafiel or the Zophiel to counter charge basically that card in the damage to have 3 face up damage from 0 all by ourselves. That's why like damage 9 going into turn 3 is really not worth it. This card is really important. Like uh, they made a Celestial card and made it generic as hell. And I hope that the next wave of Angel support is just as generic because God, I want Gabriel to get better and better. But right now the deck feels insanely good. All right, up next is our other, uh, well, part of the rescue engine and actually the last one of it, which is the Zophiel. On Vanguard Circle, when our attack hits, you draw cards. So it's a nice like going second. You can basically like pressure your opponent if you're playing in something that you can allow them to have the Candle Blast on turn two. So it's a nice little extra draw. You can commit a booster behind her too for that purpose. But when placed on rear, you can discard one if you have a vanguard with black in its name and then choose a card from your damage zone add it to your hand and then damage yourself one it's a hard once per turn so this is the other the second card in your deck that does not cost counter blast to rescue check therefore it's kind of a counter charge and you can take away like discard quick shields if you're going second you can you know discard random dud cards in your hand like multi if you have like three serials in hand you don't need that many right you only really use like one per game for the search maybe you need like another one for the boost or something but otherwise they are burnable expenses and she's just a great rescue check you know you can do a maximum of eight drive checks in one turn with if you have every piece of the rescue package and she is an important part of it and then the strongest booster in this deck is actually the Great Three Searcher, which is the uh, Nakir. So you might be thinking, oh my god, you had so many SPs until now, why don't you have SP Nakirs? I don't like her art that much uh, compared to the original one. I really like the original one's art, but then I considered buying them, and then I saw this beautiful foiling for Clan Collection Volume 2, and I was like, you know what, this looks better than an SP. <laughs> so this is just your generic Great Three Searcher. It is nothing too crazy, you just went place from hand top 5 for a Great Three. But this is again even stronger now because this just Hamiel, this searches Gavriel, but it also searches your heal guardian, which means you survive early push from some decks, you survive the mirror match if you're going uh, second because you get to heal guard their Hamiel, and in general it just gives you, like, the heal guard is so important because also, not just is it used defensively, but if your opponent is damage denying you at zero damage, you can use this to find your heal guard and damage yourself to one, and then use Gavriel to go to two, and then use the Yofiel to go to three, just like I said earlier, right? So this card is actually very important, and it must be played as a four of, because also it's a 13 k booster if at least one new card is put into your damage zone this turn so or any player's damage zone i guess so it's very very important because it's a 13k boost which will push hamiel to bigger numbers and then i have a one-off slot for grade ones and i play the bellyful meds angel so this is literally the uzume decklist by the way for those of you that figured it out already global meds actually had a purpose for me in that sometimes i'd have a hamiel stuck in the damage zone i wouldn't have one in hand so what you can do is like basically use her first to dig out the hamiel from your damage zone and then call the hamiel so it's your first rescue check because you don't want to like use gavriel skill before hamiel is on the board or use like yafkiel or salafiel or anything before the hamiel is on board because those are wa wasted rescue checks for getting to your win con so you want to use cards like Billful Meds to help you with that and she's also a plus one to soul she goes to soul for her cost and that is very 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 important so I like that a lot about her but Suo played the grade two that functions as a 29k attacker sorry 29k booster when you're at five damage and keep in mind that Yofiel can push ourselves to five now and because of that it's also a pretty good card that you can run as like a one over two of, so I'm gonna try that out next, but this card did do great things for me. And now for the triggers, of course, we have to talk about this, the Heal Guardian. 
like i've already talked mostly about it <laughs> i've already talked a lot about it so far uh so of course heal guardians are great threes with 15k shield and 10k power when you guard with them from hand if you didn't write a great three yet this game you can choose and use one of the following skills one of them gives you vanguard plus 10k for the whole turn so you can survive against like really aggressive decks like novas or tachis a pale moon and like things like that that try to aggress you early aqua force as well as part of those lists or you can choose your opponent's attacking unit and give it minus two crit for that battle so things like the hamiel in the mirror match or just like think you know if they sacked a little bit and you know you guarded their vanguard and then they have like a three crit rear guard coming in but you only want one damage there you go but when you call it if you don't have any cards in your damage zone you can deal yourself one damage well you put the top card into your damage it's not a rescue check but of course this card is also incredible as i mentioned before you need it to push yourself to three from zero you need it to survive against certain matches Chops, and it's just a great card like we do play heals now because also you can return these back to your deck with Gavriel by putting it to the damage zone and then using Gavriel's skill to put it to the bottom and then you can use either Sariel or the Nakir to shuffle your deck because otherwise you have like a bunch of crits and heals stuck to the bottom because you keep putting them back with Gavriel so you need to keep in mind that cards like Nakir and the uh, Sariel can shuffle your deck so you want to shuffle your deck every so often when that bottom of the deck is really stacked and you want to pray for these heals just keep in mind to push yourself to like four or five damage with the Yofiel so that if you check a heal you will not actually heal out of Hamiel's skill and instead you will be able to use Hamiel and even if you heal to like four or three that means when that like one or two Yofiel's resolve at the end of the turn you're going down to like two or one which is super good. The rest of the trigger lineup is very very straightforward we play four and eight of the regular crits because they are crits and this deck is super reliant on them putting everything onto Hamiel and then of course critical sentinel are our choice as well because we get protect ones which are PG from riding Gavriel. Crit Sensor is still very good. A lot of attacks like in the current meta are stopped by them. Against Prisms, this is like a pretty safe way to guard their Vanguard because they're usually coming in with like, what, 23? So it's usually like a safe two to pass. You can add like a 5k to make it three or like intercept away like a Yaf Yafkiel or something that you used last turn to make it three. And in general, just a lot of, I noticed a lot of things that I faced off against throughout the whole tournament, like crit pgs just i mean crit sentinels really do stop a lot of it and then the starter of course is simply you know just the pineal so now i want to spend a bit of time talking about my matchups throughout the day so let me just dig up my notepad because i was taking notes so round one i played against luard uh this was a really strong opponent actually like right off the bat she played super super well and i remember at the end of the game um she swung like she had like you know the bonus crit you know regrade ones already in the front row there's also a matchup i tested a lot so i kind of like knew when to pass knew when to give damage knew when to not and kind of like damage gated her a little bit with like swinging into rears with Gavriel and the other rear to take out intercepts and then only swing with Hamiel to face to try and kill and if it didn't kill try again next turn. So I won the Luard match um, I remember she swung with Vanguard first instead of the Morfessa first which they usually do and I was on three so I was like that's smart because if she you know check crit crit I would die so I had to guard that and then if she could put crits on the other rears I would also die to that but luckily I could take one of the rear swings for two damage and then guard the rest pretty easily and then just went in for game. Then round two I played against Royal Lover who was playing Prisms and this was my my loss i was just going pretty dry on checks and he had a very like just smooth sailing game right it wasn't anything like particular about the game where like he was sacking or like i was you know or i like bricked and g assisted or something it's like no i just didn't really see many of my parts and he so, like had a very consistent game plan because that's what prisms do and i just lost momentum really quickly and he won with that run three played against astral poets uh this one was actually quite tough because i had to keep in mind that eos anesis can stop hamiels so i kind of had to play around with that in mind and there was one of my hamiels that got stopped by Neosinesis, but luckily he ran out of them and then I managed to take it all. Then I played against Maelstrom, this was against Zanist, one of our fellow community members. I believe I won with a 5 crit Hamiel while he was on grade 2. I think this was the most brutal of my wins throughout the day, so apologies Zanist, but it was a good game. <laughs> then round 5 I played against Ange, so this Ange game was really interesting because I was expecting to only face uh, Prisms, and Ange is actually the only Bermuda deck that I own, like it's, a, oh, I, technically I have everything for Prisms too, but I really enjoy playing uh Ange myself it's like the first ever Bermuda deck I ever played and he played excellently like he could set up like double tier was after bouncing like a bunch of cards like he basically like played a tier one, bounced four and then used Ange's skill to call another tier one, and then he knew when to damage stall me so like sometimes I'd guard with a Salafiel and then you just pass with me like a two damage and like no way to counter charge and no way to use any of my skills so I had like a vanilla turn there even so he played super well, but I managed to kind of like control the tempo and keep a big hand, like by not overcommitting when I didn't need to. 
and then managed to grind it out and win eventually there as well. Round six played against Victor. This was a player from Vietnam and his Victor deck was really scary. Like I just basically went through his entire hand on one Hamiel attack and then he played down the Nova promo. That's like Soul Blast one draw card if you have like three or less cards in hand, I think, or four or less. And then if you have like two or less rears, draw another one. So he like replenished his hand with that, put down like a huge DOS sledge board with like kick kicks and like cool hanks and everything. And it was actually really scary. Like his Victor deck was genuinely frightening. But luckily, like I also was really lucky in this game where like I checked defensive turn one, checked defensive turn two. He wasn't really aggressing that much, but I think it shut down like one attack each time. And then I also just like, I remember like I, I rolled on my first Hamiel and I was like, wow, I'm surely not going to get any more crits this whole game. And then I counted how many crits were out. And it was like six. I was like, I played 12. I was like, wait, there's still more in deck. Or I think it was like five. I was like, wait, how is there still seven crits in deck? And so, yeah, that was a pretty strong win for me. Then round seven played against the Musrax, a Dutch player with Chronoja, which was a very interesting list. He had the grade two, which says like when you intercept with it, you can bind a card from your hand to basically work as a perfect guard. And he had that on his field. So I had to go like Gavriel into it and he guarded it. Then I had to go with my other rear into it and he guarded it. And I was like, okay, fine. I attacked Hamiel to phase for lethal and he intercepted with it. But because he spent so many cards guarding that one grade two and then bound another one he had very little to play with next turn and i was able to steamroll kind of like you know just kind of snowball that win there as well but it was a really good game like that was mad close then round eight this was so at this point i was six one right i only had one loss which was the royal lover and his prisms in round two i was six one and this is i think where the nerves started to kick in because i, I was like playing pretty casually the whole like tournament just like ah oh, yeah yeah you know i'm having so much fun blah 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 and then um, you know, and like message Kai about it. And then he was like, dude, oh my God, isn't this like your first like top in ages? Like, oh, you got a top dude. And then I was like, I, I've actually never topped a Vanguard solo event. I've only topped team league <laughs> or like on like a regionals or higher level. Cause I've always like somehow just been topping like buddy fight and Digimon and like somehow just not Vanguard. And every time I just bubble, like I'm so used to like ninth place, 10th place, 11th place, 12th place, 13th place. Like I'm used to bubbling and not barely not making it in. And so when he said that I was like oh my god oh my god oh my god like I started to kind of like feel myself not feel myself I started to get worried and then other people started saying that too like oh my god you're gonna top and I think that kind of got to me because I'm not like it's weird right I spend so much time commenting and I know how the players feel but when you're put in that position yourself it feels so weird and so alien almost so then I played it on stream against uh Steven on his list Suo his Gavriel list was simply better I made a huge misplay one turn where I used the Yofiel at the end of my turn to take a Hamiel to Hand for absolutely no reason. I should have taken a grade one, which would have let me save a Salafiel and a Yafkiel in hand, because then next turn he left me with no face up damage and I had no way to counter blast it up, so I had a vanilla turn there. And if I had taken a different card back, like I would have been able to go like Salafiel, heal some random garbage, have a damage face up, use Gavriel's skill to, or, or like Yafkiel to take back the Hamiel, and then call down the Hamiel to like, you know, call down something else, and then use Gavriel to counter charge myself way back up, and then slowly but surely get the three counter blast face up. And I don't know if that would have won me the game, but I would have gotten much closer. Closer. but that game was on stream and when the VOD is up you guys can rewatch it I made some you know I made a really big misplay there but Suo was simply better than me so I definitely deserved that loss so at that point I was 6-2 and then my final round like I said started at 3 a.m this was against Ichi who was playing Night Rose I oh, I had like I think I could have won like I had I think like three or four different opportunities to win and it was like just small sequencing errors I healed out of Hamiel twice twice I healed out of Hamiel, which is crazy. And the only reason that happened is because like then I healed out and I was like, oh, it's okay, I can still Yofi. I was like, wait, Yofi is in damage. I have no ways to get anything out of my damage to my hand. Fuck. Like I have to like just, you know, Hamiel got PG'd. Hamiel got PG'd next turn. Literally the same thing happened next turn. I had one heal in deck and I was like, come on, man. My deck is still pretty big. You know, there's no way I'm going to check the, the one heal in my deck. I checked it. And at that point, again, I could have played around that. I could have like found a the Yofiel earlier, self damage myself so the heal would have actually, you know, not mattered. And then when I finally went for the kill with Hamiel, the final turn, like he guarded with no cards left in hand. He had just enough. And then he killed me with four skull dragon attacks. And I was just like, oh, I just went to bed after that because it was like 4 a.m. I had to wake up at like four, like four and a half hours later to commentate EU top eight. So I was like this, oh my God. But luckily I still finished 25th somehow with a 5-3 record. We definitely like, I think I should have, like if I didn't misplay like an idiot at 3 a.m., I would have finished 6-2. Ichi made it to top eight. And I wonder if I would have beat him if I would have as well. Suo was one of my tiebreakers who ended up, who was like very, I think he was like second or third seed in top eight. But my other tiebreaker was Royal Lover who ended up like 15th. So it was still a good tiebreaker, but I'm not sure if it was strong enough or if I would have ended up like ninth or 10th again. So I'm still 
still happy with my results. I am still very happy considering I haven't played in seri like seriously played in a Vanguard tournament in like two years, simply because I'm always commentating, right? And if anything, I'm thankful that this time around I could commentate EU and play in NA. And now I'm gonna really gonna grind it out for standard for these next four weeks to try my best and top it as well. Because even though I'm a commentator, I still really like I have that competitive drive and that spirit to win and do my best. And I really, really do want to come out on top again. But yeah. That was my deck profile. There's a lot of really cool things about this deck and I'm going to work hard to get better and better because I really do enjoy playing Gavriel. V Premium definitely needs some hits and if Hamiel is to be hit in like three months, then that's going to suck. We're we're hopefully, I mean, I'm hoping we get another win con then because I don't know what the deck's win con will be if, it's, if we don't have Hamiel. Because when the deck low rolls, it feels like it's like a tier three deck and when it high rolls, it feels like a tier zero deck. So it's really hard to balance Gavriel as a result. But with the new additions from Client Collection, like this deck is a dream come true. It feels so satisfying to play. I think if they would nerf Hamiel or like ban her or restrict her to like one, they would have to give us some form of multi-attack, I think. Like give us like a new Gavriel form or like some kind of generic Angel Feather that allows to be called out from damage mid battle phase. So that that way we at least have some other way of pushing, you know, without relying on just like obliterating the opponent in one swing with Hamiel. So yeah, guys, that is my tournament report, my top 32 tournament report for BRO 2021 V Premium in the NA stage. I'll be back for standards, so I hope to see you guys there too. It'll be really fun. And I hope a lot of people sign up for the both the EU and the NA events. You know, for EU, I'll try to feature you guys on stream so we can, you know, I'm always very happy when we can feature one of my community members on stream. And then for NA, hopefully I'll run into you, right? So yeah, guys, I think signups will open like early January, so we still have a while. So let's test, let's play test lots and do our best and, you know, pick the best decks and the best decks that we are comfortable with into the tournament and do our best. But yeah, guys, if you also played in V Premium in the BRO stage or in Premium, actually, let me know how you did in the comments down below. And if you have any questions about my list or any suggestions or any like whatever comments about it, feel free to let me know as well. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. But yes, we'll get them next time, boys. We'll do even better and go even higher. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys liked the video. Please give it a like if you did. And if you like my content in general and you haven't already, please do subscribe and also check out all the socials in the description below. But otherwise, that's going to be it for me today, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.